All right, welcome back. We just finished arteries um, and all the intimas of the different blood vessels. So now we're starting with capillaries. Capillaries are microscopic vessels with diameter so small only one red blood cell can pass through at a time. Walls are only thin tunica intima. Parasites are spider-shaped stem cells that stabilize capillary walls, control their permeability, and have a role in vessel repairs. Capillaries supply almost every cell except for cartilage, epithelia, cornea, and the eye lens. They function in exchange of gases, nutrients, wastes, hormones, etc. between the blood and interstitial fluid. Capillary endothelial cells are joined by tight junctions with gaps called intercellular clefts that allow fluids and small solutes to pass through. There are three types of capillaries. The first type is continuous capillaries. Continuous capillaries are abundant in skin, muscle, lungs, and the central nervous system. Continuous capillaries in the brain are unique because they form the blood-brain barrier and they do not have intercellular clefts. Here's an, um, an illustration of a continuous capillary with a parasite on the outside, an intracellular cleft, see there. So we know that this is not in the brain because remember the brain do not have intracellular clefts. <clears throat> the second type of a capillary is the fenestrated capillary. These are found in areas where active filtration occurs, like the kidneys, absorption, like the intestines, or they have endocrine hormone secretion. The endothelial cells of fenestrated capillaries have pores, like Swiss cheese, called fenestrations. Fenestrations allow for increased permeability. Here is a fenestrated capillary with fenestrations, or these pores. Okay. You have it right there and right there. The last type of capillary is a sinusoidal capillary. They have fewer tight junctions and are usually fenestrated with larger intercellular clefts and incomplete basement membranes. They also usually have larger lumens. Sinusoidal Capillaries are found only in the liver, bone marrow, spleen, and adrenal medulla. Blood flow is sluggish, which allows for modification of large molecules and blood cells that pass between the blood and tissue. These capillaries contain macrophages in their lining to capture and destroy foreign invaders. Here is a picture of a sinusoidal capillary. It has the larger lumen. <clears throat> excuse me, lots of fenestrations and few tight junctions. And there, it also has macrophages. Capillary beds are interwoven networks of capillaries between the arterioles and venules. Microcirculation is the flow of the blood through such a capillary bed. In a capillary bed, there are two types of vessels. A vascular shunt is a channel that connects the arteriole directly with the venule. A meta-arteriole is the thoroughfare channel. And there are true capillaries, which are the vessels involved in the exchange. First, the vascular shunt or meta-arterial thoroughfare channel starts with a terminal arteriole that feeds into the meta-arterial. The meta-arterial is the intermediate between the arterial and capillary that is continuous with the thoroughfare channel, which is the intermediate between the capillary and the venule. And this feeds into the post-capillary venule that drains the bed. I think all that is better illustrated with this um, figure. Here we see a capillary bed. There is a terminal arterial over here that feeds into the meta-arterial. 
See, the meta arterial then connects directly with this thoroughfare channel to create the vascular shunt. Off of the meta arterial are true capillaries. Okay, all of these. Blood flows into the true capillaries when the precapillary sphincters are open. So if these are open, blood can go through the entire capillary bed. If these precapillary sphincters are closed, then blood flows only through this vascular shunt, which is made up of the meta arterial and the thoroughfare channel. And then all of the blood ends up going to the postcapillary venule. True capillaries are the exchange vessels, and there are about 10 to 100 true capillaries in a capillary bed. True capillaries branch off of the meta arterial or the terminal arterial. The precapillary sphincters regulate the blood flow through these uh, true capillaries. This picture shows the blood flow in a capillary bed when the precapillary sphincters are open and then closed. So if these guys are all open, then we see blood flowing through all of the true capillaries. However, if the body shuts off, these or closes these precapillary sphincters, then the blood only flows through the vascular shunt. All right, now we made it to veins. Veins carry blood towards the heart. After the capillary bed, postcapillary venules merge into larger and larger veins. Starting with the venules, capillaries unite to form the postcapillary venules which are made up of endothelium and a few parasites. They are very porous and allow fluids and white blood cells into the tissues. Larger venules have one to two, la one to two layers of smooth muscle cells. Veins are formed when all these venules converge. Veins have all the tunics, but the thinner but have thinner walls with larger lumens compared to the corresponding arteries. The tunica media is thin and the tunica externa is thick. They have collagen fibers and elastic networks. The larger lumen and thin walls makes veins good for storage, so they are called capacitance vessels or blood reservoirs because they contain up to 65% of the blood supply. Here we see the difference between an artery and a vein and a slide, and we're gonna be looking at this in lab. Veins do not have the thick tunica media, and they also tend to collapse upon themselves. Okay, so we have this being very thick. Here it's thin and it's collapsed. This chart shows where our blood volume is within our cardiovascular system. Most of our blood, 60%, is found in the systemic veins or venules. This is why we give them the name of capacitance vessels, because they store the extra blood. Blood pressure is lower in the veins than arteries, so our bodies have adaptations in our veins to ensure that blood can return to the heart. Veins have large diameter lumens, so there's very little resistance. Also, veins have valves that prevent the backflow of blood. The valves are most abundant in our limb veins. Venous sinuses are flattened veins with extremely thin walls. They are composed only of endothelium, for an example, the coronary sinus of the heart and the dural sinuses of the brain. On the right, we see a vein with a valve. The valve, remember, prevents the blood that's going through here from gushing right back down. So it'll come up and then it'll sit here in this valve area before it gets pushed back further. And then eventually it will reach the heart. One of the problems we see with veins are varicose veins. Shown here, this is when veins are dilated and painful due to incompetent or leaky valves. Genetics, obesity, prolonged standing, and pregnancy contribute to the formation of varicose veins. 
blood pools in the lower legs weakening these valves, and they're found in more than 15% of adults. Increased venous pressure also um, that can cause Increased venous pressure can cause the varicose veins. Hemorrhoids are varicose veins in the anal veins. They develop when straining um, happens when you're delivering a baby or having a hard ball movement. So these are just basically veins that ended up collecting more blood. Our next topic is anastomosis. Vascular anastomoses are interconnections of the blood vessels. Arterial anastomoses provide alternate pathways or collateral channels to ensure continuous flow, even if one artery is blocked. We see arterial anastomoses commonly in joints, abdominal organs, the brain, and heart. There are none in the retina, kidneys, and spleen. Arteriovenous anastomoses are shunts and capillaries, like the meta-arterial. Venous anastomoses are what it says, collateral channels in the venous pathway. Venous anastomoses are so common that an occluded vein rarely blocks blood flow. Okay, we're going to stop here and pick up on the next video.